Hello everyone, this is Brady. So today we're going to recreate this animation using geometry nodes. I'm going to use the node group presets I've made for myself. You can download them for free from the link in the description. So let's start. So here we're in Blender and let's go to nodding. I'm going to create a plane so that uh, we can have the object to hold the geometry node tree. I'm not going to use the group input. Instead, I'm going to use a curved circle. And for better visualization, we're going to bevel that and then I'm going to change the radius, increase the resolution so it more like looks kind of a sphere. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is to shrink that. So let's take a set position and the position vector mass. So I want to decrease the scale on the axis. So just uh, take and multiply. And the one one on x y axis, so now it becomes completely plain, and then we increase the value a little bit. So it's not really a uh, plain, but it becomes much shorter. Okay, you can even increase the resolution. Next thing is basically polygon manipulation. So we did a we do a split edge, uh, taking attribute info nodes. I will explain the similar concepts uh, in which we're dealing with as all this kind of polygon center. The basic idea is just the two attributes capture them uh, in the face domain. And basically that's it. So once we have this, we do another set of position. This time, I'm going to use the proximity fourth. And I'm going to combine X, Y, Z. Proximity 4 is basically just a geometry proximity node and I'm going to increase the, this scale so you can see it immediately all these kind of changes. Uh, by default, every attribute you're using is in the point domain. That's why you can actually see this kind of a smooth change. But uh, once we split the edges and we plug this polygon center into the custom vector, then you can see the polygon is being manipulated in this case. Okay. Here, I want all these kind of polygons to go downwards instead of upwards. So I just uh, switch these uh, maximum values to negative. And now it looks kind of a shockwave animation. Maybe you can really do that. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to add some randomness. So you can add a lot of randomness either using noise texture or random value. Here, I'm just going to use the random value. Okay. And the plug, uh, plug the polygon index, otherwise the effect will be exerted on each vertices, then you have a very noisy uh, result. And instead of uh, using add, I'm going to add a multiply so that the effect is only working on, the on these polygons which has been affected. Okay, so once we have done that, let's add a solidify modifier so that we can actually extrude some face out. And once we add a solidify modifier, uh, we, you will realize there is, a, there is actually a shade smooth, which is inputting uh, on our geometry. And uh, you can eliminate this shade smooth by toggle this shade smooth. But maybe you want this shade smooth, so this is completely up to you. We will discuss this later as well. But I want to call your attention that if we extrude with a lot of amounts, then there are other polygons coming from the other sides. So to eliminate that, we need to eliminate these kind of polygons in this group. But we cannot make a mask based on the position. So when we are deleting this geometry, we are going to take the mask based on the normal. So separate X, Y, Z. And take a float compare. So if the normal z-axis is less than zero which means they are facing downwards they will be eliminated so now we have only upper half of donuts and now if we extrude with the value then everything goes downwards you can see there is a rotation of polygons this can be easily solved if we just take this and multiply to zero or you can keep some level of rotation it's completely up to you but basically this is the idea talking about the animation uh, it's kind of very easy. Let's just uh, set curve tilt. And by animating this curve tilt, then we are animating this entire setup. Okay, so you can either keyframe this or you can either actually set up a expression, but I'm just going to use the preset of time info. Because we're working with the division, so let's play with the animation first. 
So if we would like to, so now all this kind of polygons is going outwards, but if we want everything's going inwards, then we just uh, take everything negative. Another thing is the, because this is running division, so larger the amount, larger the factor, then slower the rate. Okay. Next thing I would like to do with this animation is I want to add some rotations of these kind of polygons. So here I'm going to take a vector rotate. And I basically need to deal with this kind of position instead of offset because I'm rotating these kind of polygons. So the way I'm going to do is that I'm firstly going to take the position into the vector and I'm going to rotate it all this kind of each polygons as a whole. So let's change that to ULA and let's combine. You can either combine XYZ or use combine ULA. I think it will be better if combine ULA because the if you're using combine XYZ, you need to calculate the conversion between radius and the degree. And then plug these rotations into rotations. If we plug this vector currently, there is nothing happens. But if you try to animate these rotations, then you can see the effect of rotating. But there is no differentiation of the whole setup. So we are going to add some differentiation by adding either a proximity fold or yes, let's just add another proximity fold and we are going to increase the scale. We can still use the polygon center and plug this fold into the place. Uh, immediately you can actually see this kind of effect. This is also how you can actually make a vortex in this case. Uh, you can increase the amount as much as you wish, but uh, probably the effect is not very prominent. So let's make just that 40, 40, I think is good enough. Okay, and uh, you can add another mass nodes, for example, another time info node to actually animate that. So finally, this is up to you how you customize this entire animation. Okay. As a final touch of this setup, I'm going to giving some shaders and uh, do some changes. If you are trying to set a material for any geometry generated inside the geometry nodes, then you need to use a, a set material. This is equally true if you're instancing inside geometry nodes, but this node does not create material, so you have to create a material elsewhere. Okay, so now you can actually deal with the color. There is also a saying that I would like to add some wireframe for all these kind of cubes. So let's just uh, add a wire material. And within the modifier, I'm going to add a, a bevel first so that I can actually eliminate this kind of uh, shade smooth issue. Or you can, as I mentioned earlier, that you can actually use this shade smooth to eliminate this shade smooth. It's up to you. Actually, probably using shade smooth is better. And then what I'm going to use the wireframe. So now we only have the wireframe without the original geometry. So we are going to untick this box. You can increase the scale of this wireframe so that it becomes thicker. So now if we go to material view, then everything is just the black due to the material that we set. But if I change the material index to be negative one, then we'll use the second material. So now we can actually change the scales. Okay. So if by any chances you added some bevel, then sometimes you may want to reorder these two modifier to see how they affect your results because I observe some flickering if the bevel is before or after. So sometimes you have to try by yourself about all these kind of parameters sorts of stuff. But uh, basically this is yet. So if you play this animation, you get kind of ideas. Also to know that uh, this animation essentially finally is affected uh, all of this by this kind of resolution. So you can deal with the resolution by your own and so on and so forth. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.